Hey everybody, Scott Detweiler here, and today we're going to talk about textures and applying them to your photography. So if you're familiar with my work, you'll notice that I do this quite often. Uh, one of my favorite things to shoot in the studio is my white wall. So I typically put a scene in front of my white wall and then maybe light it in a certain way and then apply the texture later depending on the mood I want for the image. So in this situation here, we have a picture of Kylie. Uh, it has been retouched, so we are starting with an image that is uh, typically where I would begin my texture application. The skin is handled and uh, any other dodging and burning is completed in the scene. Now, I did not fix the flyaway hairs or stray hairs in this image, uh, mostly because I want to talk about how we work with those with textures. Um, and uh, you're going to kind of lose them as we apply the texture to this, depending on how you do it. So you may not want to go overboard with your touching hair first uh, because you may not need to do as much. So uh, better to err on the side of less work than more. So uh, I'm going to talk about some of the basic things that I run into when I'm applying textures and how to kind of work your way around them. And we're going to troubleshoot some of the, the problems that most people have when applying textures uh, in that, uh, well, we'll get to that when we get there. So first of all, let's talk about value. So when we talk about value in the image, we're talking about the light versus the dark areas of an image. So the um, typical way that I would look at value would be to take something like this and set to, oops, color is fine. So we can see where the lightest areas and the darkest areas of the image are. Um, and we've got kind of a neutral gray that kind of runs most of the way around the image except for in the middle where you can see there's a, a bit of a dot of light against the background to help pull her forward from the background. So there's a figure to ground thing. If you are not familiar with that, um, I'll have some uh, compositional videos that'll come out later, uh, but most of the time you can catch this uh, pretty protracted uh, speech of mine at uh, Shutterfest in St. Louis each year. So in this case, we know from the values that we have here about the level of texture we're going to be able to apply easily and quickly. Meaning that if we find a texture that has about the same value that we should have a very simple time of dropping that texture in. So uh, what do I mean by that? So let me go to bridge here and I'm just gonna grab one of my uh, textures here. And you can see it's kind of a modeled uh, simple brown texture and I'm just gonna uh, kind of stretch it to fit the scene here. And then I'm gonna place it underneath that layer before. So you see it's kind of, it has a, a, obviously a darker area over here and a lighter area over here. So does that work with this? And we can see that kind of in some places it's gonna be about the same value, but in some cases it's gonna be a lot darker than the, the existing background. And in some cases it's gonna be a lot lighter. So what does that mean? What, what's the problem with that? And that means that when we apply this texture, we're going to get a halo around where the darker part of the arm is trying to work with a darker texture when it's not used to that. Or in the lighter part, we're going to run into a halo around that or a black line or a darker line that will try and uh, intersect that. So let me show you what I've, what I've done here. I'm just gonna take a, um, I have a, a rough uh, mask of her that I made. I'm just gonna apply this here. We have to put on black and white again. And we can see what I'm talking about where areas where the texture is darker than the original image, we can see that we have this light line because the, it's expecting the texture to be about the same value as the other one. And we can kind of see that when we come down here, we're running to an area where, like right in here, it looks pretty good. So if we turn this on and off, we see it's it's about the same. We can see there's a little bit of a, of a line here, but we're getting closer. And then down in here, we have the same problem. We have a lighter texture, or I mean a, a lighter background and a darker texture. So let's go over here and look at the, the opposite problem. So this mask is not the greatest mask in the world. And we're going to talk about masking in a bit here too, because that's a big part of texture application. But we see we really don't have, I mean, we have some dark lines here you see around the flowers. So if we turn this texture on and off, you can see, sure enough, the texture underneath is darker than the texture we're attempting to apply. Uh, around the arm here, in some places you'll see it's perfect. It, like This looks really good. And if we turn this on and off, uh, we can see it's close to the same value here. It's not looking too bad. So part of this texture looks really good. And we'll notice that when we get up into hair and things along that lines, uh, the mask really starts to chop up what we're looking at. Here's the mask. So um, just a quick mask. And I'll show you how I made the mask too. It's very simple. Uh, but we need to kind of resolve this because this, this uh, 
this glowing of the texture is, is our problem. So this is for the simplest types of textures to apply. You want to find one that has a value that is similar to the existing base picture. So let me pull up this one. This is another texture from one of my texture packs, and I'll put a link in the description. Um, these are all ones that I have made, and obviously appreciate your support if you enjoy them. Uh, so this, let's just turn the black and white here on, so we can kind of see it's uh, it's not too bad. It's it's about the same value overall. It's you know got uh, well, a lot more texture going on into it than the background, of course, because that's our goal. But if we put this on and we look at it, and we'll go grab our our mask. Hold on Alt and hit the, the key. So we've applied the uh, the mask to the texture and only the texture. You can kind of see we don't have that same glow that goes around here. It looks a lot more looks a lot more natural. Like we're not going to have any trouble. Don't worry about the hair right now. But see, this looks really good. There's not going to be a problem with introducing this texture into this image because the value of the the background and the values in the texture are the same. So there's hue, saturation, and value. Those are your three things that make up, you know, your colors, your um, way of visual perception. So we like this one. So let's just keep this one and get rid of that black and white support layer there. All right, so this looks meh um, because it's, first of all, it's the wrong color. Uh, it's really dominating the scene. So let's talk about how to get something to be a closer color. So the first thing that I tend to do is attach a hue and saturation adjustment layer. So um, I would just go here and attach this. And I'm going to clip it to the layer underneath. You can do it with this button here. Or you can hold it, the Alt or Option key and click right on the line between the two and you'll see the same icon. Uh, this will allow you to have the hue and saturation adjustment layer affect only the texture. It does not affect anything else. Double clicking on the word resets it. So one of the weirdest things I've found is that typically when I'm working on a texture that one of the blending modes tends to really kind of do a lot of the work for me because I know that I have the lighting in this background is exactly what I want and I would like the texture to emulate that background. So what I want to do is I want to go through each one except for dissolve because that <laughs> the most useless blending mode in the entire application. All right so darken uh, will allow um, the darker colors to come through multiply um, we'll talk about multiply in a bit multiply is kind of a um you know there's there's things that multiply does that that are not amazing uh, but you can get kind of some cool ideas from it so i tend to look at them and i just kind of walk my way through it and i will tell you most of the time you're going to find that the overlay and soft light layers do a lot of the heavy lifting but i still like to look around so here's overlay and here's soft light you can see there's a little bit of a difference between the two. Um, we'll just keep going so you can kind of see what we're doing. You see each blending mode offers something a little bit different. And sometimes they're pretty cool. Like sometimes you're like, oh, I really like that one, you know, whatever. Um, so I always look at all of them. All right, so let's go back and let's just pick soft light because uh, that looks really nice. Now, now that we have this picked out and we like it, let's talk about the the problems we're going to have with, uh, let's move this actually to overlay so you can kind of see what I'm talking about a little easier. Let's talk about depth of field. So in this, in this scene, we can see the flower, for example, is not quite in focus because the, the depth of field does not cover the flower. It's mostly for her face and even her hair is going to start to kind of lose it around the edges. But this texture is tack sharp, which doesn't make any sense. And we're going to find that when we're trying to mask things in like this, that we're going to have some difficult times because the mask is assuming the same crispness uh, that like the foreground would have in the background, which is going to look kind of weird. If we blur this background to emulate depth of field, we will get a much easier match. So uh, this is a smart object. So I'm just going to double click on the smart object icon in the layers palette. I'm going to do filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I almost always use six. Uh, this is my Sony AR7 III, and with that nearly 46 megapixels or so on, I find a six to be decent for frequency separation as well as background blurring. In fact, I think I tend to use about the same number for most of them uh, just by virtue of how I'm shooting against that wall. 
Uh, but you know that that's just a indiscriminate value. You can pick whatever value works best for you. So when you're done, just close this uh, and hit yes to save it. And 12, you know, we wanna save it as this maximum resolution and bam, we should see uh, what looks like a pretty legit texture. I mean, it looks, it should look pretty good. Now we have some mask issues we'll fix in a minute, but but that looks really nice. Like it's already pulling the lighting that I took the time to do properly in camera and we're more or less colorizing and texturizing it. So we can also play with the hue and saturation for this layer. Um, a weird little thing, and I don't really know why this is, but I almost always find that when I shift the color of my texture 180 degrees, I get something that I like. Um, and it's just one of those weird little quirks. Uh, so we can go with a, either a, a tan picture here or this, or we can pick any color in between really. But um, because we don't have a strong color cast in her body, we're not gonna have any trouble kind of picking a texture to go along with it uh, color wise. So we could back to say to you know, tan's kind of boring because it blends in with her body a bit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go with the blue. Now we do want to lower the saturation a bit so it's not overpowering. And there we go. I like how that looks. So that's the quick and dirty way to do the texturing. So let's talk about the problems you're gonna encounter on your way to that texture. And most of that is gonna revolve around the mask. So let's take a look at the mask for this project. So in order to get the mask, I do a real simple thing. I just grab, well, you can start two ways. Go to select and hit subject and make sure you're on a layer that has the subject on it. And Photoshop should do its best to find the subject and it did a poor job. <laughs> so uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our uh, quick selection tool here. And I just basically go and grab the stuff that Photoshop forgot. And um, sometimes it, you know, it'll grab too much, which is fine. And then you hold on your alter option key and you go back and you just kind of remove things that you no longer need. Um, you just do your best. It doesn't have to be super accurate at this point. As you'll see in a minute, we're gonna kind of torture this mask a bit. Uh, so I'm just, again, holding down my alter option key and picking some things and that went a little bit too much. So we'll just go back. It's kind of a learning tool. So as you're picking and deselecting things, it's learning the colors that you like and don't like in this particular image. Uh, so I'm okay with having to reselect an image a couple or an area of the image a couple times for it to learn it. Uh, there are better tools for this now, but um, I wanna show you this tool because this is the one I use the most and that's how we're gonna do it. Uh, some some things to keep in mind when you're doing this. If we leave this area selected and then we go in and we try and fix this later, it's going to have great difficulty because it assumes I want this. So we need to make sure that we're overly unselective. So I would rather do something like this than it would have that gray area selected at all. Um, it just it just makes life a little bit harder on us later. And I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a minute. So I just need to get this close. I don't need to make it super accurate or not sending it to the moon as I like to say. So uh, that looks good enough. Now I do want to make sure too, like we talked about a minute ago, that I don't leave these areas completely selected because uh, they're going to be hard to unselect later. So you need to put a little bit of gray in there. Every so often this thing just likes to hesitate. So we'll give it a minute. Come on, come on. There we go. I'm sure shaking it had something to do with it being faster. Okay, good enough. Let me just make sure we've got what oh, looks like a decent, somewhat decent selection. Okay, so I do select, select and mask, but I don't use the traditional, or the new tool uh, because my machine would, uh, or Photoshop would crash on my machine for quite a while and it stopped doing it, but I got really used to using the old method. And I'm just gonna show you that because again, that's how I do it. Uh, but you can use the current select and mask tool. To get to the legacy select and mask tool, just simply hold down, uh, hold down your shift key when you select select and mask and it will bring up the old tool. So what I do is I like my view set to the overlay one. I grab the brush here and my goal is to just kind of quickly go over the areas where there's hair and I just do it in small swaths. Um, I find this better than if you're doing this kind of thing, you sometimes get weird results. Uh, same with this. So if we, this is a good example here. If we take and brush over this whole area, it's probably not gonna come back. Meaning it's not gonna deselect that area. It's gonna go, oh, you wanted that whole thing, here you go. And it did, so we're gonna undo that. 
And what we want to do is we want to try and take it in pieces. So we take just the top part, for example. And that should work okay. It may try and feather it yet, yeah, feathered it just a little bit. Uh, so we can do this, we can do, I, I'm, I, by the way, I'm holding on my Alt key and sliding my mouse right to left, increase or decrease the brush size. Uh, see, that looks pretty decent. And again, I can just take my brush and kind of go over part of it. If I go over the entire thing, it's going to be overly aggressive and try and select too much. As long as this thing is spinning, we haven't uh, got our final view. There we go, that looks pretty good. Same on this side. So just kind of get part of it. It's a bit tedious, but this is a lot easier than, than uh, having to do this uh, any other way, really. And then you can kind of see that the hair on her arms and stuff is not currently selected. So we do want to do kind of a perimeter, just kind of go around the perimeter on it. And that will soften that edge up a bit, again, depending on a lot of other factors in the image that you're dealing with. Uh, but I find that I get a good result there. Okay, hang on. There we go. Same with the flower. I'm just going to kind of go over the whole thing here and just get the edge. You can use some of these settings, but again, I'm finding that there's a bit of a blur that this tool will detect that these tools may not. See, that looks really nice now. Uh, where a minute ago it was just a bit too choppy. So same thing here. We should pick up that leaf. And again, don't try and cover the whole gap and one run because it won't work very well. And we'll see what it does here with the side of her dress. It may or may not like that and do okay. And we do not need this to be super accurate because there's going to be some play we're going to have and we'll talk about troubleshooting this a bit. Uh, so basically just want to kind of go around these. All right. And again, there's faster ways to do this, but this is the way I've been doing it for a long time. And um, say I can't be taught new ways, right? <laughs> uh, and we do have some stuff in here that we'll fix. So we'll just hit OK for now. And this will be fine for what we need. All right, so uh, we do want to deselect some of these areas in here uh, that are not going to be what we want. Um, but we'll deal with that in a second. So, right, so let's create a, let's save our selection because we're probably going to use this a few times. I usually just give it a number. Um, so I already have one, so I'm just going to go ahead and call this one two. Uh, and if you, if you um, control click on it, it will select it. Uh, and if you alt click on it, it'll show it to you. So if we're looking at it, we can then use our brushes and do different things to it, like use a white brush here and get rid of those pieces in the middle. Uh, do we get rid of something we weren't supposed to there? I think. Uh, yeah, we, uh, no, that's part of a flower petal. I was sitting there kind of, am I seeing through her? So uh, we do want to get rid of that and this. And we see we have some areas that are a little fuzzy, like down in here. So a, a cool way to get rid of that uh, again, without being overly aggressive, is to take a brush at 100% flow, 100% opacity that's white, and change it to overlay. When you paint with overlay inside of a mask, anything that is not exactly black will become more white every time you go over it. So we just brush back and forth over that, and it will take that mask. So you can sharpen up some of these areas here uh, that are not exactly black or white. Uh, you can do the opposite by hitting X on your keyboard to change it to black, and it will do the opposite. So uh, be aware that you can shift either direction. Now, we don't want to go over hair that way. Uh, sometimes that leads to a really nasty result. But uh, in her scalp area, for example, we could probably get away with that. And, uh, and we got a bit of a, a dress that's not quite working out over here. So let's go in and look at that. So if we hit... Uh, well, hey, well, we'll do that in a second. Let's look at this. All right, so this looks better, and I'm happy with that, and we know that we have a channel that looks good. So let's go ahead and get rid of our mask on this, and we'll need to grab the new one. So I just go to Channel, Control, Click on that, and go back to Layer, and then Alt, Click, and put a mask on it. Let's do that one more time. So uh, if I have nothing selected, if you Control, Click on any channel, it will select the luminosity of that channel. So the cool way to do that is to go in and click on this too. There's another way to do it. You can go up to select load selection and pick one or two, but that's a whole lot of clicking. So just get used to doing it this way is where your selections are stored are in channels. Control clicking on the thumbnail will select it. Go back to layer, make sure I have the right layer selected. And if I alt and click on this 
to apply a mask, it will do it properly. And we should have what looks like a pretty decent mask. You know, we should have uh, our values are decent. Let me see if I have a problem here, but, but we know our values are okay, so we shouldn't get a halo around the texture. And then if we kind of apply our, our hue and saturation adjustment layer that we liked before, we should get something decent. Now we, we do see we have a problem here. So there's a couple ways to fix that. Uh, the easiest way to do it is to take a brush and the brush you apply should be about the same hardness as the edge that you see here. So a brush like this, for example, is going to make a, a pretty terrible uh, mess. So we make sure you put this back in normal. Uh, it's just not gonna look right. And if you're trying to fix it this way, it's gonna look super fake. So it's not exactly a, a hard edge. So I'm just gonna kind of, I'm holding down again, Alt and right clicking because I'm on a PC. If you're on a Mac, I think it's a uh, control I don't know, option and alt or something like that. It's one of those keys. They're next to each other, but you left click, not right click. So all I do is I'm adjust my brush and I want the fuzziness of the brush to kind of match the edge of this garment. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of guess. I'm gonna do is I'm going to click, hold down shift and click again. And it's gonna draw straight lines for me uh, because I know for the most part, this is gonna be a straight line, you know. Uh, this is a little bit too soft from what I see there. So I'm gonna go and oops. Harden it up just a bit. Try that again. We are working with a very small detail in the image, so no one's going to notice if this isn't exactly right. And then I need to get rid of the rest of this here. It should look pretty legit. There, that looks legit. Now we do see we have a bit of a black or a darker line here. And if we turn our texture on and off, you can see that there's just the background is just a bit darker in here because of the way that selection is done. So a couple ways to solve that. Uh, my favorite way to do it is to take a curve and simply uh, lighten this curve here. And then I want to invert the selection. So control I, grab a brush, a B for brush with a low flow. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint in a bit of brightness in here. That helps bring the value up. Now that looks super fake because it's too close to her. So we're gonna make it a big brush and bring the, the whole area up a little bit. And there we go. Let's check down here. We have the same problem we know. No, this looks pretty good. You can also use this to kind of help you uh, if you have areas that are just not, they just don't work. You're getting that liner on the model. You can always add a bit of that brightness uh, to the texture to help that line go away between the model and the texture. Okay, that looks really good. Here's what our mask looks like for that. So it, it uh, gets rid of the lines. Maybe this is a little bit obvious down here, but at least you get the idea. Okay. So this looks really good, but it's kind of subtle. And if you're thinking, geez, you know, if one's good, then many of them's gotta be better, right? So what we can do is uh, we can take this layer and uh, we can drag it down to the new layer, which will duplicate it. Now it's creating a train wreck because it it broke my layer stack. So let's let's do that again. Uh, I can do this a couple of different ways. I can hold on my Alt key and move the layer, which will duplicate it. Or you can do Control J, which will duplicate it. Uh, but the easiest way is just to hold on your Alt or Option key, click on a layer, and drag it up, and it will duplicate that layer. So now we have this. We create another hue and saturation adjustment layer. Clip it. And then I'll probably just drop the saturation all the way to zero on this one. And that just adds a lot more oomph to the texture that we had. One of the problems with this technique is that we just took the file size up significantly. So we're almost to a gig right now. Oh, look at that new subscriber. Thank you very much. The odds you're getting that when I'm, when I'm uh, recording. <laughs> uh, so I tend to not do it this way because it will make the file much bigger. So there's another way to do this. And that is we just apply, it could be anything, a curve, a level, it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna use a curve and you don't even have to touch it. You just pin it and then change the blending mode to overlay. And this will more or less double the strength of the texture. Uh, so it just took it and doubled it. Now we didn't even play with a curve and we certainly can, you know, we can go in here and we can mess with this a little bit uh, to do something that maybe the original texture didn't, didn't do the way we wanted it. I can also control I and invert this mask so it goes away and then grab it, a big soft brush. 
Again, I almost always use my opacity at 100 and my flow is the low number. That way I can kind of brush in an effect. Uh, so let's pan out a little bit and I'm just gonna brush with white on this mask. And uh, let me just try that again. Yeah, let's say 10% instead of one. It's being pokey for some reason. And I'm just going to brush in bits of that mask so that the area with the curve, you can see the mask is kind of getting developed up there, is uh, making the parts of the image more interesting. Just by adding that little bit of oomph. So here's our before and after on that. So it's not the entire texture, it's just around the perimeter. So it gives it that kind of painterly look. Because we duplicated the original texture, we don't have to worry about going back and re-blurring it. We should have great coverage with the hair. Every little tiny hair is still there because we're using a blending mode, the overly blending mode here. If we were using normal, you see we get this choppy junk that most people encounter. Uh, and there's really no benefit to doing it this way. And if you look at the difference between the two methods, so we do before and after, my lighting, which I worked hard to do in studio, is showing through with the overlay method. So we get the benefit of the lighting coming through as well as all the delineation in the hair and so on. We just have to make sure that again, our values are about the same so that we get don't get that weird halo around. Now there are ways to get rid of that halo and I don't really wanna go into those because there's about a thousand ways to do it. And realistically, I think all of them look kind of bad at the end of the day. If you're working with lighting and you know what you want, then replacing it later with the texture as I'm doing is simple. As long as you have a good number of textures to play with and you know about the values you're looking for. Uh, if you're trying to replace the background here, for example, with black or white, you're going to encounter some issues because, again, you're going to have that halo around the model. And in those situations, I would probably reach for the pen tool. The pen tool is an amazing tool, although a bit of pain to use. You can do some great things with the pen tool. However, the pen tool is not going to work for hair. Uh, so you're going to end up with a situation where you mask out the model, replace the texture, and then go back and try and draw in the hair. And I... I I'm not saying mask in the hair, I'm saying actually draw in the hair. We're gonna draw some of those hairs free, freehand so they look legitimate once again. But using this method, I can get away with a lot. All right, so let's do it one more time, uh, just for giggles. So I'm just gonna get rid of this and I'm gonna grab a different texture. Uh, let's grab a really messy one here. Let's grab this one. And this texture here is from the same texture pack. And it actually has a texture. You see it's uh, somewhat of a relief. Uh, in fact, let's grab the non-textured version. All of my texture packs come with a textured and non-textured version uh, because sometimes I want the texture and sometimes I don't. And in this situation, I don't uh, because I want this to look a little better. And I know right away I'm going to have to blur this. So filter, Gaussian blur. Six is fine. Close it, hit yes for saving it. I don't save and then close. I close it and then hit yes to save. It's just my my way of doing it. Go to channels and we our mask is still good. So we're just going to control click on that. Go back to layers and then hold down alt and apply that mask. And this looks super fake uh, because we need to change the blending mode. So again, overlay and soft light are usually your two winners. In this case, I think soft light's a bit aggressive. So I'm going to go, I mean, uh, overlay is a bit aggressive. So I'm going to go on soft light. And again, I'm going to go and look at the perimeter here. We have a little bit of a masking issue down here, don't we? We do. Uh, so again, I'm using a brush that's about the same hardness uh, and just going in and making sure we're on the mask. Flow. We can go in and just kind of mask that out. And we should get a pretty decent Pretty decent look. Now, so now here, do you see this line that goes around this flower here? That's because the texture underneath is lighter. Or, yeah. Or different. I'll put it that way. <laughs> so, same trick. I can go and I can grab a curve uh, and change it. Now, let me show you an action I created that's uh, because I do this so often. I have an action here that just says uh, hue and curve. And all it does is take the current layer on. 
put a hue layer and a curve layer and then pin them both down. That's all it's doing. It doesn't do anything amazing. In fact, it doesn't even change the curve. Uh, so I'll say I make this curve a little bit darker. So this line, I'm just looking at the line where the flowers are joining. Like, like that's almost better. But then down in here, it's getting dark. See, I pointed at my screen there and you didn't pick that up. <laughs> uh, so this is looking kind of choppy. So we got to be really careful. So go here, soft brush. Not too soft though. It should be about the same, again, same diameter as the area you're trying to, or the same featheriness as the edge of the material you're trying to mask. And then in through here, we see that we have, if I'm taking all the texture away, that these leaves are lighter. And that's part of our problem. So to get rid of that, I would probably add this curve. It's a bit darker right now. How's that look? Actually, it's pretty good. But we don't want it dark everywhere. So again, I would control I in that mask. Use a brush, big brush, soft brush with a low flow. And just go down in here and add just a bit of darkness to that background so that I don't get that weird featheriness around the, the flowers here or the leaves. So just darken that area in. And that should look a lot more legit. So it's not so much a matter of masking which, I mean, you want to do your best job with, but it's a matter of matching the tonal value. And you see these are both not too bad. Again, if I like this one and I want to double it, just add another curve, make sure it's pinned, and then change it to overlay, and that will pump the texture up. Or you can use soft light again, too. But again, this is a bit, bit much. So I might want to uh, mask this out. Go back and then draw this in where I want it. I must be using a special brush here because this thing is just taking forever. There we go. So something like that, maybe. Oh, this is too dark up in here now. So just paint with white to undo that. There you go. Anyway, you get your personal preference. You do whatever you want to do with that. But that's how I tend to texture my images. It's pretty simple. Uh, as long as your lighting is decent, swapping a texture in and out is relatively simple. And again, changing the hue and saturation of it, 180 degrees, almost always results in something interesting. And I would try and match, not match her outfit, for go, but go for what is the opposite of her outfit. So uh, I like to see a little bit more tonal variety. So like maybe this is really nice because this is kind of her skin tone and this blue is the opposite of her skin tone. So this looks pretty decent. And again, if it's too much, I can always push this up or down, but um, that should look pretty nice. So that's how I do textures. So there's a bunch of tips in there and tricks and apologize if I go a little fast, but you can always go back and rewatch it again. Uh, I am going to try and do a lot more videos on this channel and really kind of get into it a bit more. I've started a Patreon. I've had it for a while and kind of haven't been using it uh, for anything. And I'm going to go ahead and kick that back into gear. So if you're interested in seeing more of these and you'd like to be a supporter, I will put your names on the screen here with each of my videos that I do. And I really appreciate the uh, time. And uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I will get to them. And then let me know if there's any videos you'd like to see on any techniques that I haven't covered or that you'd like to see me cover and I'll knock them down in the future. Until next time, take care.